All right, everyone. RuneScape released its first RuneScape three released their first combat skill in like fifteen years or something. So let's check out uh, Necromancy, guys. Is RuneScape's newest combat style, and it really calling it the best combat skill. Hey, that that works. That works, right, guys? It shows what the EOC can be. So let's dive into how to play it, as well as some tips and tricks that I've learned from my first few days with the skill. Starting off with the two types of abilities in Necromancy. We have necromantic abilities from your death guard and conjures from your skull end. Yeah, so different abilities, guys. Are they splitting it into? I don't know, guys. Is this usable in PvP? Is the question. You want to be using both of these to get the most out of necromancy, but let's dive into necromantic abilities first. Necromancy uses a builder spender system with three resources adrenaline, residual souls, and necrosis stacks. There are two basic builders that generate these resources. Soul Sap generates residual souls, and Touch of Death generates necrosis stacks. Yeah, bro, some abilities, bro, new abilities? Not bad, not bad. Hey, but that's the reason why some of us quit RS3, you know what I mean? Big fan of here is one of those quitters of RS3. You want to keep these two abilities on cooldown as much as possible, so you can even set up a two size revolution bar for them so that the game uses them over basic attacks. Yeah, always on cooldown reminds me of some World of Warcraft things, but hey. When, when, when does uh. I'm sure RS3 already has some things that you always needed on cooldown, right, guys? And on the note of basic attacks, Necromancy has a slightly different basic attack to other styles. It acts like a filler basic ability in how much damage it does, and adrenaline it generates, however it's not a basic ability, so it isn't affected by effects like Fury of the Small. Alright, alright, don't know what he's talking about guys, so it does, however, let's move on. Global cooldown. Now we've started building some resources, let's start spending them. Residual souls stack up to free and are shown as orbs under your adrenaline bar, as well as on your buff bar. There are two- oh, Snap, bro. Guys, reminds me of that one, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh card. It was like Soul Drain or something. It was like in the first few sets, man, back when I actually played the game. ways to spend Residual Souls. Soul Strike and Volley of Souls. Soul Strike is an- Volley? Like Volatile Staff? AoE, which also stuns- I do not know what AoE me means, so I apologize in advance. Moving on. Using a single soul per cast. So use it when you need a stun or for AoE damage. Volley of Souls requires at least two residual souls, but is best cast when you have three. It fires all souls at a single target. These abilities do the same amount of damage per soul, but using Volley at three stacks uses the fewest GCDs for that damage. Next up is Necrosis stacks, which cap at 12 and can be <laughs> found in your buff buff. Sorry man, I had a uh, 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 sidetrack for a little. Uh, I still don't understand this that much. I apologize. I'm trying my best. There are two main ways of spending necrosis stacks. First up is Finger of Death, which is a large single target hit. Ah, bro. Electricity finger. Interesting. That costs 60% adrenaline. Minus 10% for every necrosis stack it consumes on. Guys, I just want to see him, uh, you know, beat, beat next up. The other way to spend them is the special attack found on the tier 70 plus death guard called death grasp. This special attack has a 30 second cooldown found in your debuff bar and deals a sizable chunk of single target damage. It also consumes all of your necrosis stacks for extra damage. I have a same strong single target damage thing. Okay, nice. Nice. Not bad. Necrosis, bro. That sounds like a scary medical term, right guys? Nobody wants necrosis IRL. Having around 8 necrosis stacks ready for this special will cause it to hit for huge damage. We also have some other adrenaline spenders. Bloat costs 20% adrenaline to put a dot on the target that spreads to other targets when the first one dies. Man, they're adding tons of freaking combat related stuff, man. <laughs> it was a, it, one skill is a huge update, that's all we guys No, you know what I mean? Spectral Scythe is unlocked via the talent tree and is a free stage ability that costs 10, then 20, then 30% adrenaline. It does considerable AoE damage as well as generating residual souls. And finally, we have Death Skulls, the ultimate ability of necromancy that is affected by the Berserk Cape. 
It costs 100% adrenaline and sends out a bouncing skull that bounces between enemies or yourself in single target that bounces for t Oh, okay, so it's like the Venator bow in OSRS. Okay. Interesting little uh, addition uh, here. With the Zuck Cape, the adrenaline cost is reduced to 60% and it bounces six times instead. This ability is very important for Necromancy's DPS cooldown, which we'll cover in a bit. The last ability to cover is a utility one, that being Blood Siphon. This ability drains health from all nearby mobs, then does a big single target hit based on how much it drained. Oh, whoa. I mean, abilities already make the game cracked as it is, but now that this is here, guys? Oh, snap. What are level you need for this? It's incredible for sustaining an AoE, and the damage is nothing to ignore either. Conjures are up next, and I want to see some PvP with this, man. We gotta maybe make two or three more React videos with this new skill. We gotta, we gotta check it out. There's currently three of them. They all take Ectoplasm to summon, so remember to bring that with you. The Skeleton Warrior is the simplest conjure. It doesn't cost adrenaline to summon or to command. The pictures just remind me of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'm sorry. <laughs> I miss playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But right now, that's ex an expensive hobbit. hobbit. Habit for Fano. Sorry, guys. Missing out on a little sleep here. Did like 10, 9 reaction videos today. I apologize. Command, and will attack your target with auto attacks. Its command empowers it for a short time to do more damage. The Putrid Zombie is an AoE-focused conjure. It costs 50% adrenaline and auto attacks as well as emitting a poisonous cloud for AoE poison damage. It Ooh, nice, nice, putrid. <laughs> that, that zombie's not smelling good, guys. The art style of this reminds me of like plants versus zombies for whatever reason. You know, it's like a zombie called zombie. That's what it reminds me of. This command causes it to explode and deal huge AoE damage. Finally, the Vengeful Ghost is a healing-focused conjure. It costs 30% adrenaline to summon, and like the skeleton, it will auto-attack your target, healing you based on the damage it does. Its command is the first one to cost adrenaline at a huge 70%, but it causes the ghost's attacks to apply Haunted, which causes enemies to take double damage from all attacks. So, the, 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 they won't auto-attack, man. <laughs> that's good, that's Up good. Up to a cap. Conjures this is totally going to change PVM in general, and PvP. ...are very much worth summoning in a fight, but take some time to get set up. However, you can summon them out of combat and command the ghost without spending adrenaline. So you want to be starting your fights with all three... Wait, you can do it without spending adrenaline? What? Before the fight only. Wow, that's pretty cracked. ...out, and the command ghost activated. As for cooldowns, Necromancy has two- Alright, we are going to get into some gameplay, because that's what I want to see here. I want to see the summoning of this stuff, bro. Whatever it is. The Necromancy. <laughs> two DPS cooldowns. Living Death and Split Soul. Split Soul is the simplest one to understand. Oh, Split? Is it, it going to be like Soul Split? Oh, okay, okay. For 20 seconds, your Soul Split does damage instead of healing you. Simply use it oh. right before using all of your big hitting abilities. That's Living correct, death guys. is a bit more interesting and unique. Rather than applying a damage buff, it instead augments a bunch of your abilities for 30 seconds, as well as resetting the cooldown on death skulls and touch of death. The augments are the auto attacks apply necrosis, touch hey, bro, he's getting down to the specifics of this, man. Touch of death generates more adrenaline, finger of death hits harder, and death skulls has a much lower cooldown. The way it seems best to use this cooldown is to use Death Skulls as many times as possible within it, and use Finger of Death to spend extra Necrosis stacks when your weapon spec is on cooldown. This cooldown heavily benefits from using an Adrenaline Potion, so use it when you have that available. To be honest, you could do a whole video on the Living Death rotation, but as long as you're using Adrenaline on Death Skulls and spending Necrosis stacks on free Finger Cut- Okay, hey, he's done with the technicals soon here, guys. I just want to see the gameplay here, guys. Sorry, I haven't played RS3 that much. You'll get a lot out of it. To see Necromancy. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. I wonder if this is the guy streaming. This is the actual video maker here. But he's already 92 Necromancy. Woo, bro. Check out that new total level, man. Almost 3,000, guys. Well. Wow. See in action. Let's look at her mod. 
These weren't speed kill attempts, but rather my usual kills when farming plates for the power gear. Before combat, I summon all three conjures and command a ghost. Okay, okay, so that one, that one, and that's like his familiar or something. I don't know what that and is. I open up the combat with death skulls, letting revolution fire. You know what it reminds me of? Let me move this. It reminds me of, uh... Archaea spell, but because you also do some necromancy related stuff, like a uh, kind of like similar kind of stuff, and you, you summon skeletons in Archaea spell book, so that's what it reminds me of. Fire off my builders, and from here, it's very much a case of reacting to your resources using volley of souls at free souls, the weapon spec at eight. I have no idea what he's fighting, but. Bro has like a lot of things in his like squeal of fortune or whatever, like the, the treasure chest right there. I guess he's just saving Plus up necrosis stacks. While saving necrosis stacks for the spec, I sp look at all those cooldowns, man. Wow, this game has gotten quite complicated, bro. Look, see all those cooldowns. And it's not that different from OSR, so I'm not sure if any of those are potions or anything. Bend adrenaline, but you, you can see all the timers on my OSR, but the timers on this are actually built in. Oh, that's pretty cool, right, guys? On bloat and the first hit of Spectral Safe to fish for an addition. I don't think there's any third party clients for RuneScape 3, is there? Residual soul. Otherwise, the excess goes into Finger of Death. And that's the gist of playing Necromancy outside of cooldown. It's a simple style to play, but it heavily rewards you for using your resources correctly. So. He's got three summoning pets, guys. Ooh, nice, so to nice. summarize the priority rotation of necromancy that I've been using, first you want to keep death skulls and death grasp on cooldown, then you want to be using soul sap and touch of death to keep those on cooldown, volley of souls when you've got free souls, put excess adrenaline into finger of death, and bloat and spectral safe if you want to save necrosis stacks for an upcoming death grasp. How Look at all these cooldowns we're going to have to learn, bro. If I ever want to play RS3, man. Look at all them. That's all quite a bit. Use cooldowns kind of depends on the encounter, so just adapt accordingly. And don't be afraid to just let the auto attack fire if you don't have anything to press. It will give a good amount of adrenaline and it'll even generate some necrosis stacks when you're in your cooldowns. The last part of this video is a talk through I did of one of my next kills when doing the tier 80 tasks to get power armor. So I'll be leaving that in here just as a kind of example of a more complicated fight using a necromancy. 800k to to join next guys <laughs> oh it's for instance you said the max players minimum combat he said it's the highest combat available or maybe maybe it's higher now with a new combat skill 375 onyx bolts e by the way wow that's quite a big drop that'd be that'd be worth like a few mil on osrs so i hope you enjoy that so, overload back here, because you got a lot to do when you get in there. Chuck curses on, summon familiars, or conjures. Use the <laughs> Vengeful Ghost's ability. So this is Archaeus Spellbook on roids, it seems, bro. Like, you know what I mean? This is a cracked version of it. Drop a Vom Bomb there. And Death Skulls. So yeah, that didn't even Vom next. Fix that. Uh, death goes into weapon spec and then just... Uh, just look at all the damage they're um, doing, man. Basics for the rest of it. Not sure if the uh, all the hit splats are from the necromancy things. Then come over here and bloat the ad into... Uh, Volley of Souls. Get ready with range prayer. gonna be fingering a deafing here because we got some spending so those are like the stackable necromancy things you you need right guys in his inventory that's what i assume but he's got 45k hit points that's pretty cracked cruiser stacks i got hit by something let me just heal that up real quick i don't know why i'm gonna run away and weapon spec uh it wasn't no the weapon spec wasn't enough um i don't actually uh, actual weapon special attack like it's OSRS? Ooh, not bad, not bad. Need to resummon any ads here, so I'm just gonna blow. Uh, I can resummon. No, you're conjured. It's an awkward timing. Oops. 
Scepter, grab this Ancient Ceremonial top quick, Revon Bomb. That was floating in the air, by the way. Then we're going to Adren Pot because I have an awkward amount of Adren. Death Skulls, Vent Folia Souls, Weapon Spec, dive out the red. And we didn't actually phase that very well. Dang, even in the even with necromancy release, next it seems to be a, a problem. Like, you know, taking quite a while. It's not like he used any food, it seems, but so, yeah. He's using rock tails still as well. I'm pretty sure they're cheaper than the best best food. And more cost efficient. Just gonna stay here and try and take her down. This is the first time I've not actually won. Oh no, I did one phase up. Okay, same deal again. Bloating the ad is. They definitely can't AFK this boss with auto retaliate on yet. More dread when I'm going. Or at least that's not the most optimal way. I'm not sure if you can do it. You might be able this to. This boss I'm using way too much. I'm not getting enough adren to be honest. Freedom here. Use resonance. I've got less a bone shield on for the res. And then same deal again, Volley of Souls into Weapon Spec here, and Finger of Death, get away from I wonder if there's anything like the Light Bear Ring in RS3, I'm sure there is, and I'm sure there's a stronger version of it, right? Contain this. I yeah, this is taking quite a while, man, for our next solo. Is it still one of the strongest bosses in the yep. game? A bit low on a dren for what I would normally like to do here, so I'm probably going to get another prison, so I'm going to dash away. I can't freedom, so I'm just going to vip pop. Pray mage. We're on to... We're on to... He's taking quite a bit of damage as well, man. So I'm going to resummon... Next is tough. Conjures against... It was loot. I don't actually have enough for blue. But I'll volley of souls to get us through this so we don't get the next prison. Okay, we are getting the next prison. That's unfortunate. Same deal again. Just freedom. Resonance. Overheal. Prayers on. I was using like some key binds for this, right guys? So, yeah, adrenaline. Uh, I can't pray. Renewal potion, okay. Still using flasks. Guys, flasks were released like 10 years ago. They haven't upgraded them, it seems. That's fine. Can't adren Actually, for no... Here, so this is going to be a wonky Zara. No, not everything's just in flask as well, guys. It's just regular potions for adrenaline renewal. Because so, I went into the blood phase too fast. Can't... Too fast, bro. Okay, okay. I see adrenaline here where I'd want to. So I'm basically just letting the basics revo away. And I'm going to death skulls. I've already death skulls. No, oh, there we go. There's the execute. <laughs> the execute is either invoke death or the tier 70 plus um, gear effect. Last Oops, episode, no. we explored our raptor inspired gen. Oops. Right, sorry, not bad, not bad. Let's look at a few comments here so I can get some more clarification here. Um, at least showing how to handle Nyx. I mean, soloing Nyx is impossible on OSRS. So, yeah, Nyx is still tough. First watching you, so 90, 90 neck, but it was really good, guys. These are super technical things. I apologize, I do not play as RS3. We'll just do. One more excellent guy to be gr grinding blindly, so I'm glad to get some better idea of what necromancy can do. This guy's doing 100 kill per hour at her, mo her mod. Her mod. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I wonder how you trained this skill. I'm about, I apologize, we, we might have to watch another video about this, but we had a viewer request and we do know a little bit about it now. So, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next one. Peace out! Now check out... Krita in the description. I'll see you next one. Do all my reactions live on Twitch. Consider donating, subscribing. I'll